Praise the Lord. We'd like to, again, welcome everybody by way of internet. Amen. We're going to hear from our own brother, one of ours in our congregation, Brother uh, Kenny. So we're just going to turn it over to you and uh, see what the Lord has for us. I know it's going to be good, right? Yep. All right. Amen. God bless you. Give me that. Give me that. Hello, church and those by way of internet. Today's theme is actually a question. And is, are you God's faithful steward? <coughs> now, first off, what is a steward? I looked it up on the internet to get a better definition of what it is. It says a person that's employed to, manager, uh, to management of another person's property, especially a large house or estate. And in the Bible, we'll see what the Lord says about being a servant or a steward. And it's in uh, Matthew chapter 25, and it's starting with verse 14. Now, now it's Matthew chapter 25, verses 14. And this is a parable of the talents. And uh, the Lord says, For the kingdom of heaven is, a man, is as a man traveling to a far country, who called his servants to deliver them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents. And to another he gave two. And to another one. Every man according to his several abilities. And then straightway took his journey. Then he who had received the five talents had made another five talents. And likewise, same with the two. He made two. But then there was another one who had received the one. And he went and dug in the earth and buried it. And hid the Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants comes back and reckons with those servants. And so he said to the one who had the five, and he says, Behold, I have gained five more. And then he says, well, well done. The Lord said to him, Thou faithful and good servant. You have been faithful over few things. I will bless you and make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And he also had received the two talents. Also gave back another two. And he says, also the same to him. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Now as you see what's going on here. He's getting, they're getting rewards for being faithful. Amen. And that's what we're also called to do, to be faithful. And it says here that the one who received the one talent. And he says, Lord, he says, I know you're a hard man, reaping where you have not sown. In gathering where you have not planted. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the earth. And then, and lo, behold, I'll give you what is yours. And the Lord answered him and said, So you say, you wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reaped where I sowed not and gathered where I have not planted. You ought to therefore have put my money in exchangers that I might receive my own in usury. Mm -hmm. Take therefore the talent and give it to him who have ten talents. Mm -hmm. For to everyone who has shall be given. Mm -hmm. And this right here is also talking about faithfulness. So if you're faithful in doing something, you're going to get more. Mm -hmm. But if you're unfaithful, you're going to have things taken away, even what you don't even have. Mm -hmm. You're going to be destitute, spiritually speaking, and also even eternally speaking. And he says, And cast that unprofitable servant out into the outer darkness where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So that man in his parable lost his soul. The Lord is coming soon. And we all better be ready and be found to be faithful stewards unto the Lord. And now, I'd like to also go to another example here. It's in chapter 12 of Luke, starting with verse 35. 
And that's Luke chapter 12, verses 35. And it says, the Lord says, Let your loins be girded. Now this is about a watching servant being on watch. About and let your light be burning. So it's like you're waiting and you have a candle. This is what I imagine. You're waiting and you have a candle and you're looking around. This is like back in the day stuff now. Now we might have like flashlights or something. But anyway. <laughs> but he was ready. No matter what time it was, he was always alert. <clears throat> and he says, And you your like selves unto men who wait for the Lord. That's what you want to be like. And when he were to turn from the wedding, that he comes knocking, that you may open it immediately. So you always want to be ready, so when he comes, you're there for him, like right there. Amen. And it says, Blessed are the servants of whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find watching verily. I see unto you that he shall gird himself and make him sit down. This is the Lord. Now, this is what the Lord's going to do. He's going to sit down with you and make a meal and serve you. That's what he would imagine that. The Lord, if you're found... If you're found waiting for him when he comes back, he's going to bless you. And he's going to serve you. The Lord of all creation is going to serve you. Isn't that something beautiful? And he says, and if, she shall, if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. And now, and this is going about, it says, now if this man know that if a good man of the house had known what hour the thief will come, now, this is also talking about the devil. If you're always on watch, the devil comes, you're going to be ready for him. But it says this, too. It says that he would not have suffered his house to be broken through. That's why you always must be ready. He goes, therefore, you be ready for the Lord now. It says, be therefore ready, for also for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you think not. And it says... And then Peter goes on, this is what the Lord was talking to his uh, apostles. He goes, Peter go, he goes on to say, do you speak this parable to us or even all? No, it's for all. It's for all his servants. This is for him. And then the Lord goes on to say, who then is the faithful and wise steward? Whom shall he make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Now, that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be that faithful and wise servant, that steward, to give the proper food to his people, to those who need or are outside in the darkness, because we have that food for them, the true food, which is Lord Jesus Christ, the bread from heaven. And it says, Blessed is that servant, whom is when his Lord comes, he shall find him doing so. So if we're found given and loving on those who are in need and loving on our brothers and sisters and that backbite and talking about them, but we're actually being like we should be, like brotherly love with one another, we're going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. That's where we want to be. Mm -hmm. But it says, Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler of over all he has. Mm -hmm. That's something wonderful. And I tell you what, the Lord has everything. So we have all things. He goes, but, now, now listen, this is but, if that servant in his heart say, the Lord delays in his coming, and start to beat on his maid, man servants and maid servants, so he starts beating on everybody else, and let's just say beating on everybody else in the congregation, of, for some reason, because he don't like them for some other reason, or whatever, because, and then he becomes, starts eating and drinking, it says, and become drunken, so they're backsliding. And the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he thinks not. When he's not looking for him. And it says, And in him in that hour, when he is not aware, he will cut him asunder and will appoint him with his portion with the unbelievers. That's not where we want to be. No. No. And that servant which knew the Lord will and, and prepare not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Now, that person, on when the Lord comes back, they'll lose their soul. And it's talking about degrees of punishment in hell. There is degrees of punishment, especially for those who knew the Lord. It says that they were beaten with many stripes. So they will have more of a punishment in hell. 
than just the common person. It says, those who knew not, as it says right here, that they, and they came into things worthy to have stripes, that they would be beaten with few, because they didn't know what the believer knew. Mm -hmm. But they're still been up in hell, because he didn't accept the Lord. Now, it says also, for unto whomever much is given, much is required. So that comes along, wrong, along with uh, gifts, or whatever we may have, or talents. And so if the Lord gives us something, we better make sure we're um, using it, not sitting on it, like that wicked slave. He had that talent, and he buried it. The Lord gave him something, he had an ability, but he chose not to use that ability, and look what happened to him. So if we're given something by the Lord, we better use it. And use it to the fullest of our ability. Amen. 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 Now, and he goes, and for um, <clears throat> and forever who have men have committed much, like if you give much, you're going to ask more. But that's just what it is. If you're doing much in the Lord, he's going to ask more of you and you keep on moving forward with you. That's what we're supposed to do. Now, once we're born again, we become servants or stewards of the Lord. And God blesses us with these talents and abilities, like I was saying. And a matter of fact, everything that we have is from the Lord. And so, and all of us have been given from the Lord. All of us, everybody. There's something that God gave you and us. And that's what it comes down to. Now, the question is, are we being a faithful steward of them gifts, of them abilities that we have? Now, the question is also, we be faithful, or we're being faithful with the calling he called us for, because all of this has been called. Mm -hmm. Now, someone would ask and say, What is my calling, or what is my ability? Well, he all, he, we all are, are to serve him. And, and what that ability is, is that we're all to share the gospel. That's for a fact. Everybody, no matter who you are, is supposed to share the gospel. Why? So souls might be saved. And that's the main thing. All these souls that are out there in the majority of the world is, is going to hell. Mm -hmm. And so you think about it. What are we doing? Are we sitting on our talent, so to speak? Are we sitting on that and burying it within ourselves and deciding, you know what? I'm, I'm too afraid. I'm too afraid to use it. I'm, I'm too uh, shy to use it. That's not, that's not enough. That you can't have excuses. You're saved. You're born again. You have eternal life. You have the Holy Ghost living inside you. He's the one that helps you do things. So what are we doing? 